Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Mastermind Minutes. My name is Gary Occhigrosso. I am the managing partner for Franchise Growth Solutions. You can find out what we do by clicking the link above my head. Uh, but Mastermind Minutes is where we share tips from experts in minutes, not hours. Uh, we have one guest, one question, one expert answer, usually in under 10 or 15 minutes. Of course, you can always contact the guest after the uh, broadcast directly. We'll give you their contact information if you want uh, you know, more information or want to speak to them uh, about expanding on the, on the question or what they can do for you. Today, my guest is Aubrey Kodir. Uh, and she is the National Sales Manager at C Squared Social, and she specializes in the franchise space for the company. She has 15 years of sales experience, and she looks very young to have 15 years of experience. We'll talk about that. <laughs> she has 15 years of experience, uh, and she's been working for the last six years primarily in the, in the supplier side of, of franchising. Uh, she has a bachelor's in organizational leadership. She is a native Southern Californian. And she told me once that she drinks more coffee than whatever the recommended daily dosage is of coffee. <laughs> so, Aubrey, thank you very much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Always Great. So, so you, before we get to our before we get to our one question, um, I know about C Squared Social because I'm one of your clients, and most of my clients are with you. But why don't you tell the audience who may not be familiar with C Squared Social what what the company does and what you do and how you really help yeah. franchise owners. So um, C Squared Social, we are a digital marketing agency. We're based out of San Diego, California. Um, and it's kind of interesting because the, the path for C Squared to get where it is largely playing in the franchise development space now. Um, the brothers founded the company to support their siblings who were franchisees. So our original kind of grassroots efforts were really at the local level. Um, and then over time, over the last 10 years, it's just evolved into franchise development. So I came on board a few years ago um, and we've continued to expand in that space, but primarily we're focused on the paid ad side of social. So there's a lot of different ways to use social media marketing. You can focus on content, you can focus on targeted ads. Um, our kind of expertise is, is definitely in the targeted ad side. Um, and we're really fortunate to have an agency partnership with Facebook. So that means we get some extra, you know, tools and helps from those guys. So um, it's a big platform. There's a lot of purposes, but we're, we're really focused on lead generation or how do we make our clients more money and um, not just having it, you know, a pretty face on their Instagram account. So um, it's a lot so, of fun, a lot of different and, conversations. And, and you do. And I will, I will, um, I will give a plug to uh, the folks over at C Squared and Aubrey. Who happens to handle you know my accounts um, <laughs> we have a great cost for acquisition uh, with the leads that we generate they're very flexible in terms of how we uh, go after people whether it's social or SEM or click-throughs to the website again you can contact Aubrey directly and she'll, she'll give you that information one of the things yeah. that, that I love about Aubrey and C squared is that they they deal with so many different franchisors uh, really a lot of different companies, but in the franchise space, so many different franchise companies um, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, you kind of have your finger on the pulse of how people have gone through the pandemic. You know, some of my clients pulled off, some actually, you know, increased their advertising. Ramped up, uh, yeah. We ramped up. I mean, and now we're kind of moving into this, I like to think this opening stage where we're starting to reopen the country. Um, what, you know, what have you seen from your clients in terms of how they're using maybe digital overall, but in particular your platform as part of their um, reopening strategy for the lack of a, of a better term? What, what are you seeing, hearing, feeling out there? Yeah, it's, it's definitely been an interesting, you know, two months. There's no way we can... Uh, like skirt that idea. But what we've really seen, you know, initially there was a lot of pull out of the market. People were pulling their marketing budgets. They didn't know what to do. Um, so those that continued on really benefited from the fact that overall internet usage was up dramatically. You and I talked about this 73% engagement over, you know, a six week period. Um, we saw cost per leads going down. So what was actually kind of creating a perfect storm for our clients was that so many people were pulling out marketing dollars really did have a lot more value. Um, and because people were, are, and continue to be predominantly stuck at home, 
their online use time skyrocketed. So, you know, as far as like driving brand awareness, increasing engagement, letting people know who was open when they were open, um, there really was a unique opportunity there. And so as we are now currently in a state um, or time where states are starting to reopen at different levels, um, our clients are using uh, new methods. Everyone's starting to pivot, right? We want to support our franchisees. How do we do that? So it's really been an interesting state where sometimes franchisees are coming to us on their own and wanting to craft a campaign for their local market. But what's really, I think, overwhelmingly been successful is when franchisors have said, hey, like, how do we, how do we get them through this? And what kind of messaging can we design? So um, some of the successes really come around like, um, a branded corporate strategy, like here's a portfolio of ads that we've seen um, available to take to the franchisees, because of course, every market is unique, like Georgia's open, California's not. So when you're phasing into those openings, each owner gets to kind of opt in based on their budgets, based on what's happening locally, um, to really let those existing clients and new clients know what's happening. Um, one of the technology shifts that we've really focused on really in 2020 was engaging bots to support with like either client acquisition or lead generation, but in an environment where store hours are different, who's open. Some people are only open Tuesday to Friday. Maybe they're a mobile business. So they're kind of <laughs> navigating the markets that they're in um, leveraging messenger bots to automatically respond to clients when they have increase has been huge. Having um, almost like that, Black Friday sell mentality has been amazing. So buy one, get one free offers on gift cards. Um, really, you know, at this time, kind of discounting prices a little bit just to engage people has also gone well. So strong promotions, um, but really that communication with, with the local market is what we're seeing have the biggest impact. Right, and, um, and I, I can tell you, I personally, I mean, look, it's always been a blend of what's the message and how are you getting the message out there? I mean, that's that's always, right. that's always the, the key. and <laughs> I mean, C-Square's ability to kind of reach the Facebook audience and the Instagram audience with lookalike and a lot of different techniques that you guys use is, <clears throat> is tremendous. On the other side is the content. So just a, a quick story, and maybe you can talk about content or pivoting content. I had sure. a client, and, and Aubrey, you know, I mean, I, we all of a sudden, we started to get a diminished result uh, in leadership yeah. for that particular client. The, the client was Gogo, is Gogo Curry. And, you know, mm -hmm. my, my reaction was, and, and I'm not usually a fraidy cat, but my reaction was to make <laughs> pull back a little bit. Um, but the CEO of the company, who is one of the most courageous people I've ever seen. Yeah, she's uh, amazing. She's amazing. She's operating uh, yeah. restaurants in New York City. Tomoko Omori, by the way, is the CEO of Gogo Curry. And um, she said, well, maybe we need to say something different. So we got on the phone with your team, and I think we crafted the message less about, hey, you know, buy a franchise to more about right. how can we help and how do we, how do we take advantage of opportunities and look to the future? So, I mean, how many of the clients have you had or other stories or information can you give us where the method was good, but the content needed to be changed up a little bit? Yeah, I think like that was number one, the thing that we saw first happen was everybody wanted to change messaging, right? And you had to because something dramatic had happened and you have to, you know, call the elephant out, right? Like, so, yeah. and this is an opportunity for brands to really prove to their franchisees and their clients that they're scrappy and they're agile and that they're willing to kind of be a part of the times. Like you, sometimes you can't just put your stake in the ground and think that everything's going to be okay. Um, Tomoko is a prime example of that. She highlighted her values as a business. She highlighted the opportunity that still existed with kind of the idea of a ghost kitchen versus, yeah, we can't do, obviously you can't sit here and eat, but this is what we're doing to be ready for that business as it comes in. And I think that like um, a, a brand that's not a client of mine, but I saw recently on um, Instagram, F45, their fitness mm -hmm. concept, they've are. actually started selling their um, their gym equipment, right? So you can do it at home. So I think that's what we're starting to, to see too, is like when you have kids education concepts, like it's probably going to be a while before they can come sit in a classroom and get tutoring. So how do you shift your product to have online registration opportunities or can you sell the um like send the packets home and then tutor online. And, and certainly I know people are taking advantage of that, but it's something that 
I think largely we have to think about. Like my sister owns a yoga studio. She can no longer operate the way she used to. It was a thousand square feet and having six feet of distance and maintaining the sanitization between each class. It's not going to be possible. So there's certainly going to be businesses that um, don't make it or for whatever reason. My sister is just an example of one. She's choosing not to reopen. But there's going to be ways that you can shift how you function your business. Um, you know, for so long, we've already been moving to that bring it to me model, like Uber Eats, you know, all these things, like people didn't want to go out. So I think in a large way, if people were to step back, they are capable of functioning with these changes. Like they're, they're catastrophic at first and they're really terrifying, but the delivery options have been there. Change your website so that, you know, you're not paying Grubhub 80% of the ticket sale. You know what I mean? Like there's ways to really control this when you kind of <laughs> take a deep breath and say, how am I going to navigate this? You know, it's, it's definitely possible. And I think those are the things that people have to start looking at. But if you have a product that you could sell where people can do it at home, we're going to be home for a while. You know, you're not going to get to go to the office at full scale. And so those are the ideas we're helping our clients work through. You know, if, if it's um, like pet food, door delivery stuff, like everyone is switching. And if you switch, you're probably going to be able to survive. Like, um, I always think like, I always think about like, this is a weird thing, but like Hershey chocolate, right? As a staple, it's still a chocolate bar. Like it's been around forever, but they've added almonds or they put air bubbles in it. So you're actually getting less chocolate, but you still bought it. So there's a way that a product cannot necessarily change, but the delivery based on the times, like people wanted healthier candy. So they put air bubbles. Um, you can stay on top, you know, but nobody... Nobody stays the same forever and wins. I think that there's some comfort in thinking like, oh, this is, you know, what we've always done. But this is clearly a time where what we've always done isn't going to be what you can always yeah. do. Yeah, and so you. the companies that are really, you know, taking charge of that and, and strategizing and thinking big picture and realizing that there's going to be shifts in each market, um, like we're here to help with that. Again, we have hundreds of clients, so we're seeing what's happening across the board and we can see you know, we know what's worked and what hasn't worked. And there's certainly not a copy paste, but there's definitely a guideline that we can get from what we're seeing environmentally. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just talking and then you uh, find that answer. I hear you. I hear you. And, and definitely there's, you know, there's a, there's a level of best practices. There is a level of, I mean, you know, you, you folks, C squared social has a database so that they can actually look alike, do lookalikes and, what I would say is there's a lot more here than we're going to talk about in the 10 or 15 minutes that I try to keep this. Because my promise to my audience, <laughs> my promise to my audience is this won't go on for hours. Uh, it seems yeah, like a lot of me these, and you, you are know, talkers. Hour long, these hour long, two hour long webinars have popped up like dandelions uh, over the last several <laughs> weeks. So my, my promise is to keep this short and sweet. So uh, Aubrey, why don't you, uh, I'm the short, by the way, and you're the sweet. So why don't there you, we go. <laughs> why, don't you, uh, why don't you tell the folks if somebody wants to get in touch with you, email address, number, web, you know, how, what's the best way? Yeah. Okay. So my email address is Aubrey at C squared social. So A U B R E E at C squared social.com. Um, you can certainly go to the website, C squared social.com. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm uh, connected with many franchise people just on my Facebook. Um, even if I've never met them, you know, in real life. So there's definitely that community online. But, um, you know, we have a great team at C-Squared. Anybody could be there to answer questions. I'd obviously love to, you know, just powwow and, and figure out how we can help. But um, that, that's how you get a hold of me. Okay. And, and just uh, for, for, for the folks who have been following the series, they know, but for those of you who just joined us, we uh, amplify this webcast on my LinkedIn page, we amplify it on, it's on the Franchise Growth Solutions page, and then we take a series of them, four or five of them, and it will be on our online uh, magazine, FranchiseMoneyMaker.com, which actually gets emailed out to about 80,000 subscribers right now. So wow. you can catch at Aubrey's email address, you can catch it on my LinkedIn, or you can catch it on YouTube, or wherever uh it's out there aubrey thank you so much for being with me today I mean, my I've, I've pleasure had a lot of fun. I, I always love listening to you and your ideas but um you know today was really yeah. thank you very much i appreciate it thank you bye. good luck everybody bye, bye.